This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're recapping a busy week for our spring sports teams. Men's lacrosse remains undefeated and is now ranked fourth in the nation. The baseball team swept Colby, and track and field began their outdoor season in style. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. Last week started with the women's lacrosse team defeating Southern Maine 16 to 6 on Tuesday. Allison Dewey, Camille Beltate, and Katie Allard scored three goals apiece in the victory. But for head coach Brett Allen, these midweek non-conference games are about more than just picking up a win. You know, I think non-conference games serve a lot of different purposes. Um, you know, USM is a competitive team in their conference, but I think we definitely stack up pretty favorable um, to them with our starters versus their starters. So uh, once we got a lead there a little bit in the first half, we were able to, you know, go to some of our kids that haven't been able to play as much, and uh, that's a great opportunity for them to get some experience and get some minutes that hopefully can help us down the road. You know, they're pretty excited to get the opportunity? I think so. Yeah. You know, I think... You know, whenever you're putting in the time on a daily basis, going to practice, working as hard as everybody else, uh, and maybe you're not playing as much in the more competitive games, games like these, I think, are something that those kids look forward to. So it's nice to see them play well. Although the women's lacrosse team fell to Hamilton on the road Saturday, the men's lacrosse team defeated the Continentals at Garcelon Field by a score of 19-10 to on Sunday, improving to 8-0 and on the season and 5-0 and in NASCAC play. With the victory... Bates moved up in the national rankings to fourth, their highest rank ever. Senior captain Charlie Faye scored five goals, and senior Sam Francis contributed in a big way as well. Joined by Sam Francis here on the Bobcast talking some men's lacrosse. Nice win over Hamilton, and you just dominated the faceoff. What was really working for you that game? Uh, sometimes it just clicks. Um, it's a big matchup position. Um, sometimes... You could go against a great guy, but if he, if you sort of have a good matchup on him, it's things just work. And I mean, we just played consistently all day. The wings played great. I mean, Jack O'Brien sort of flies under the radar, and he's picked up. I don't even know what percentage of my ground balls off the face off this year, but he's playing tremendous, getting the ball out of his stick and get down the offensive end. And things were just clicking yesterday, and it worked. And you were picking up a lot of your own ground balls. I think you had like 12. So how do you end up doing that? Yeah, um, we just sort of found a way. They were putting the, the long pull out there to try to get the ball, like get get a 50-50 ground ball off the face off, and we just. I know we just found ways all day to get the ball up and out and get it down to the attack, and we all know good things happen when you get the ball down there. So, Yeah, absolutely, and you did a lot of face-offs in high school, but we're on the field probably more than you are now, so what's it like to have that specialization role here? Yeah, um, in, in high school I took face-offs. I wouldn't say I was a face-off guy. I played midfield too, um, and I never really took the time to learn the intricacies of the position, and that's sort of what not playing, I mean, not really playing the true midfield position now in college has sort of allowed me to do is I've learned the ins and outs and all the little things that I didn't really pay attention to in high school because I was busy doing other things. So I've had a lot of time to learn all those, and it's, it's paid off. Absolutely. All right. Well, this week, Bowdoin Wednesday at their place. I mean, this is a big rivalry. They beat you guys last year in kind of a snowstorm. Yeah. I mean, how pumped are you guys? Uh, we can't wait. Um, we've been waiting for a while for, for a big game to sort of prove ourselves, and I think this is it. Um, I mean, they beat us last year in snowstorm. I think the weather might be pretty similar it might be raining <laughs> snowing on their astro turf so i mean hey we're just, we're just ready for the next opportunity so what do you remember about them from last year what's going to be key you think to getting better than this season yeah they were last year they were young and they returned a lot of the same guys and it's, i mean it's a tough team um we would play them at night in bad weather on the astro turf which isn't too friendly and and you know what they're, they're talented they're skilled they they can catch the ball on offense and finish in tight spaces and defensively they're solid they're fundamentally sound and in the face-off game, they're, they're strong, tough kids, so we're going to have to play our best game to beat them. Yeah, you guys are up to number four now in the national yeah. rankings today. How cool is that? I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> that's something four years ago none of us would have ever imagined, and there's a tough start for us freshman year, and I mean, that's one of the things we're most proud of is we can see sort of the longevity we've created, and that's what this week stands for us. Is, I mean, we're four now, but if we're going to go out and prove ourselves this week to prove we deserve that ranking, so we're excited for that. Right, obviously taking one game at a time, you got Bowden. But I'm looking ahead because I'm in the media. You got Middlebury, you got Tufts, so that's quite the gauntlet, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I mean, two two big games this week, and then we got some time off. But yeah. I mean, 
each day you just got to prove yourself, get better every day. And, and Wednesday's big. And once Wednesday's over, Saturday will be big. And then once Saturday's over, the next one will be big. So treat every game like like it's a, like it's the biggest game of the year. And I mean, that's what's got us at this point. Absolutely. And so, you know, talk about a little bit about some of your teammates. I mean, yeah. Kyle Weber had that game against yeah. Amherst where he scored nine <laughs> goals. Yeah. What was it like watching that? It's incredible. Um, I mean, Kyle's works relentlessly, works endlessly. I mean, he works, works, he works in a way too that people, other people don't work because he does it the hard way. He's, he does, works in the little things that other people, that he does the stuff that's not fun to do. And it's, it, I mean, it's paid off for him. I mean, everyone that's getting on the field this year, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, people can't, I mean, people got everyone else's name in their mouth and no one can seem to mention like Andrew Melvin or Burke Smith or Jack O'Brien or Stephen Bull or Charlie Gravina. There's people all over the field doing incredible things and it's just, there's so much excitement and such a special team that, I mean, not everyone can be talked about and it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good time. Deep team. I mean, there's so much depth on it, and you guys have guys with numbers starting the fives on the back of their jerseys, right? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's exciting to see how far this program has come since we were freshmen. I mean, freshman year, I don't think we made any cuts, and this year we have 50 high 50s people, uh, number of people trying out, and I mean, people want to be a part of this, and I mean, that's that's something I think the senior class is very proud of as we've turned this program from, I mean. A fairly competitive NESCAC program into one of the top programs. It's something like everyone wants to be a part of. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to this week coming up. Bowdoin Wednesday at their place. I'll be there with my video camera. Looking <laughs> forward to it. San Francisco. Thanks so much. Can't wait. Thanks for having me. The baseball team opened NESCAC play at Colby with a four to three victory over the Mules on Thursday. Junior Connor Speed picked up the victory, going seven and two thirds innings, scattering seven hits, allowing only three runs two of which were earned, and striking out nine batters. Junior Jake Shapiro came out of the bullpen to pick up the save, striking out Andrew Della Volpe with runners at the corners and two away in the bottom of the ninth to preserve the victory for the Bobcats. On Sunday, Bates took on Colby in a doubleheader, winning game one 9-4 and taking game two 12-0. The Bobcats fell behind 4-1 in game one, but rally to tie the game at four in the fourth inning without recording a hit. After tying things up, they loaded the bases with two outs, and senior captain Brendan Fox came through. And the 2-1 on the way. Well hit, right center field. This could be trouble, and it's going to land for a base hit up against the wall. Bates is going to try to clear the bases. The relay to the plate, not going to be in time. It's a three RBI double for Brendan Fox. The first hit of the game is a big one, and the Bobcats lead 7-4. to four. Sophomore Justin Foley tossed four shutout innings out of the bullpen to earn his first collegiate victory. After drawing 10 walks in game one, Bates drew 14 walks in game two. They missed some early scoring opportunities, but still led 6 to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. With two on and two away, senior Eric Villanova stepped to the plate. The stretch and the payoff pitch. One more time, runners go. Fly ball to right, well struck. Going back, and it's going to be over the head of Travelloni and all the way to the wall. Two runs are going to score. Villanova going for three. He's got himself a two RBI triple, and the Bobcats lead eight to nothing. After the sweep of the Mules gave Bates a 3-0 record in NESCAC play to start the year, we caught up with head coach John Martin to talk about Fox's big day and other big contributors up and down the lineup. Fox is, is going to be out there every single day, phys- as long as physically he can go. Um, you know, he's he's catalyst in our lineup. He's a team captain. Um, his approach is, is better now than it was. Um, but, yeah, he, he had a good day today, and it was good to see. So, uh, yeah, it was good things out of him. And pitching-wise, Foley in game one, he brought him in the fourth inning. He really shut things down. What do you see from him out there on the mound? Yeah, Foley does a good job. He's a, he's a tough guy to settle in on because he's throwing three pitches for strikes. Uh, works quick, good tempo. He'll, he'll change speeds on his fastball, sneak him in when he needs to. Um, but great mentality to come in in that kind of situation. Um, threw strikes all day. Did a great job. Works quick. Everything we asked him. And then game two, Teleska just outstanding, right? Yeah, Teleska was on point today. He had everything working. Uh, great tempo. Uh, got out of a couple jams that he needed to. Made some good pitches. Um, 
you know, he, he's, he's another tough guy to settle in on because he's, he's going to throw a steady mix at you all day, and you can't just sit on one pitch with him. Everything's coming at you. So uh, great job. Great senior leadership today by him, too. And the team over, obviously, a 3-0 start to NESCAC play right where you want to be, despite uh, having to negotiate the weather, right? Yeah, well, we're going to, I mean, we're going to try to go 3-0 every weekend, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, he, he uh, just the team in general was locked in, great energy. Um, you know, it was a good way to start, obviously, but, but our work's cut out for us. we got a long way to go in a short amount of time. So uh, we'll be back on, on it next weekend. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Go Bobcats. Senior Anthony Teleska earned the win in Game 2 by tossing seven-plus innings of shutout ball. He allowed only three hits, walked two, and struck out four. And for his performance, Anthony Teleska is our male Bobcat of the week. Game 2 of the doubleheader against Colby, seven shutout innings. What was really working for you the most out there on the mound? Uh, I just had really good command of uh, both my fastball and my sinker. Uh, and then as for off speed, I just had great command of my changeup, which was really the difference maker, I thought. Uh, have you been working on that changeup a lot this year? Uh, yeah, every day, throw it during warm-ups, just get the feel for it, working on control, and that's really been a big help for me this year. I know you have a splitter also. Have you been using that very much? Um, yeah, I threw the splitter uh, a couple times yesterday, more in uh, two strike counts. Mm -hmm. um, but... I was really trying to force contact early in the count, so with that, it was just pound fastballs in, change ups away, and it was really working for me, so I stuck with that for the game. You know, you're a senior, you've had plenty of wins in your career, plenty of good outings, but you hadn't been credited with a win against a NESCAC opponent, so how much big was, motivating factor was that for you? Definitely a huge factor for me going into the game. Um, I wasn't thinking about it too much, I really just wanted to get that sweep against uh, Colby, really help us out in the conference to start off the season. But, uh, I mean, after the game, just coming away with that win, it was just kind of like weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Absolutely. And uh, obviously the 3-0 start to NESCAC play, that's something that the team has, had never done and during, you know, the, since the NESCAC organized back in 99 or whatever. And so how cool was that to get off to such a fast start? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was great. Uh, definitely, want, definitely happy with the 3-0 start. But uh, at the same time, that's just one step in the right direction. Uh, we know that our goal is to win a NESCAC championship, and to do that, we just can't settle for a series win against Colby. We have to be Bowdoin, Trinity, and Tufts. So uh, from here on out, we're just going to take one series at a time, and that's it. As a pitcher, you know, that game yesterday, there were so many walks that Colby was issuing to Bates. So there were some long innings for you sitting there on the bench. How do you handle that? Because I know like, sometimes for a pitcher, a long layoff between innings can be tough. Uh, yeah, that was definitely probably the hardest part about the game yesterday. Uh, but it was easy just to stay focused and relaxed. Uh, the innings did really get too long, and I throw lightly on the sideline just to keep my arms warm. But uh, yeah, that was about it. I just I, I was focused. I knew I had to go out there and throw strikes, and was able to do that. John Martin, head coach, first season. What he's what, what has he been like? You know, as a new head coach. Uh, he's been great. He's really changed the whole culture of the team. Uh, we've been really relaxed, playing loose, and. Uh, it's just a great great way to play the game, and we're all happy to have him. And then you, as a pitcher, you're working with the first-year catcher and Jack Aaron. How's that been going? Uh, to be honest, I've been really impressed with Jack, uh, both offensively and defensively, uh, and also his demeanor behind the plate. Uh, even as a first-year, he's not afraid to take charge and come out and talk to you if need be. Uh, so that, that's just been a great experience, yeah. What's the key emphasis, do you think, during your warm-ups, during your, your you know, in-between throwing sessions that you're going to be working on to, to continue to improve your pitching? Uh, really just from this point out, going to continue to work on the off-speed control. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the change-up control uh, last, last start against Colby, but uh, this week I really want to focus on getting my curveball down, uh, just moving forward. And then if I could have those three working, I think I should be okay. Yeah, because like, that makes it easier to, like the third time around the order, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Uh, you know, first time through the lineup, maybe you just fastball change up. Next time through, you know, show them another pitch. Third time through, show them another pitch just to keep them off balance. All right, Bowden coming up this weekend. It'll be played somewhere. Three games set coming up. Anthony Teleska, our male Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Thank you. The track and field teams headed north to Orono on Sunday for their first outdoor meet of the year. The women's team finished second in the tri-meet, just eight points behind the University of Maine and well ahead of the University of New Hampshire. Senior captain Allison Hill won the 100-meter hurdles and the 100-meter dash. Junior Sally Cisse won the triple jump. And senior captain Claire Marconic won the 400-meter dash. But our female Bobcat of the Week is senior captain Elise Rubchenuk. 
She won the javelin throw with a personal best mark of 125 feet, 10 inches. Rupchanuk also placed third in the high jump. She ranked second on Bates' all-time performance list in the javelin. Going into it, we were expecting it to be a lot colder. You know, there was supposed to be snow on the forecast. I ended up getting moved to Sunday. Uh, but I'm, I was actually pretty happy that it got moved. The weather wasn't too bad. It was a little chilly, but everyone came prepared. I brought lots of warm clothes. The sun was out. I think I got a sunburn. Uh, but overall, it was really good for the first meet. Great, and you won the javelin throw against, you know, the likes of UMaine and New Hampshire, a couple D1 schools. But uh, the javelin, you know, when people think of track and field and the field events, the javelin is something that is like a classic type of event. When did you get started with it? Um, I actually started, I think, my sophomore year of high school. I picked it up one time. My track coach told me I wasn't a javelin thrower, and I just kind of signed up at a meet, and I did it anyway, and I ended up breaking the high school record at my high school. So then... He kind of said, yeah, I guess you are a jab thrower. Uh, <laughs> so from there, I threw it pretty heavily my junior and senior year of high school. So what makes a good javelin thrower? What, what technique do you have to have? What physical skills? Um, I mean, I think s strength is definitely one of them. But if you look at like jab throwers compared to like shot put throwers, shot put throwers are pretty pretty buff. Yeah. Uh, but jab, you kind of you got to have like pretty long arms and like you've got to be pretty tall. Um, speed is a big thing, too. Oh, speed because of the running start? Yeah, I mean, you have, I do like a, I think like 12 step or something like that mm -hmm. approach. So you've really got to build your speed through it. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. And that's the, that's the biggest thing I was thinking when I was throwing this past weekend was how can I better my speed? Great. I know during the indoor season, you do a lot of the multi events. Are you fo focusing on that in the outdoor? Also may try and specialize a little bit more. No, um, I was I was planning on it during indoor, but the indoor multi was pretty tough on my body. So mm -hmm. I figured I'd try and specialize and jab a little bit more a little bit of high jump see what I can do and so far I'm pretty happy with it yeah you did pretty well on the high jump I, I know I'm, I think you mentioned before that's one of your favorite events why is that I like it because it's kind of a different pace um javelin I I don't know javelin kind of happens so quickly and high jump you've kind of got to get in the zone and focus on just that event while you're there javelin's kind of something if you can go back and forth with but high jump you've really got to focus and I kind of like that I like to slow down and work on high jump and then back to the javelin um, we mentioned you won it at the meet you're second on the all-time performance list in Bates history I understand you your personal best in your career actually is pretty close to the Bates record what do you think it's going to take to get back to that uh Honestly, I think it's going to take a lot of mental toughness. I've been, I've spent these last four, or five years trying to figure out how to get up there. My, I believe my previous college PR was my very first ever college javelin throw, and I haven't bettered it until yesterday. Okay. Uh, so that was pretty big for me. I've been waiting to PR. I've come pretty close a lot, but I think to get up to that uh, number one spot, I've, you know, I've got to focus a lot and practice a lot really focus on jab as much as I can and lift as much as I can as well going into this outdoor season great now you're one of the captains on the team but you're out here doing the grunt work here trying to clear the outdoor track uh, uh, what prompted you here to, to volunteer for this uh, work here <laughs> someone's got to do it yeah <laughs> set an example I guess I don't really mind it's kind of a nice break from thesis and all of my other classwork that I've got going into this finals week it's nice to just sort of clear some snow clear my mind and as one of the captains, how do you work with you know Jess and Allie to help lead the team? I kind of I kind of see myself more of like the silent leader. They're, they they kind of like they take that initial step. They do a lot of that leadership that you can see, and I kind of see myself more in the background, like bringing the team up and that kind of thing. Lead by example. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously we talked about your goals of becoming number one in Bates history in the javelin. What are some other goals you have set for yourself in your what, final season as on a member of the Bates track team? Yeah, I think for Jab it would be go to nationals, mm -hmm. but for my other events, just kind of better myself and see what I can do with shot put and high jump at this point. What does it take to go to nationals in Javelin? I mean, are there some pretty big numbers out there? Uh, I think if I could throw somewhere in the 140s, I would have a shot at it. But it's pretty close. I, the past couple of years, I've looked at the um, top for the top uh, marks for the Javelin, and they've been pretty close within like inches for those top, mm -hmm. I think, 16 or 18 who go. Well, you got some meets ahead of you. That was only the first one. Plenty more coming up. Hopefully, we'll be able to host one pretty soon here at Bates. At least Rupture our female Bobcat of the Week. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaron. First year, Bofis Compolo won four events as the Bates men's track and field team tied host University of Maine while outscoring the University of New Hampshire in their outdoor season opener.
Junior Adedire Fakariti earned NESCAC Field Performer of the Week honors by winning the discus throw, finishing second in the shot put, and fourth in the hammer. Kimpolo won the high jump, the long jump, the 110-meter high hurdles, and also helped Bates win first place in the 4x100 relay. I think the mid was pretty good. Just coming off um, practices, we had strong, a strong week of practice. And then going off to UMAN, it was a pretty big change for me because first outdoor mid of the year in college is you know, very challenging, but I'm glad I got it out, out of the way for now. And um, just coming off the hurdles in 110, but not, I was a little nervous because the hurdles are higher this year. And, you know, just going off of it, came looking forward to the four by one. Um, we did good in that one too. High jump was my favorite uh -huh. because I always look forward to jumping high and improving my personal best every time. And what's new to me this year is the long jump, mm -hmm. which I ended up also winning. And I think just looking forward to the next few meets we have coming up. Your first year, so tell us how you ended up coming to Bates. I know you play soccer for us as well, but how do you end up deciding to come here? First of all, I'm from the Bronx, mm -hmm. so I went to a public school in the Bronx for about four years. I graduated. Then I went to a prep school in Connecticut, Loomis Chafee, where I did a postgraduate year. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where I started my track career last year. So I'm fairly new to the track world, and you know, it's just been a huge improvement. And to see how I've evolved in the last two years in track, it really means a lot. But also, on the other hand, I had soccer to rely on, so... How did you end up deciding that Bates was your spot to go after prep school? Um, after prep school, I met Coach Flaherty, mm -hmm. which is the soccer coach here. And I took the recruitment process from there, got accepted into Bates, and decided I wanted to come here for mainly for soccer. But then I also taught myself why not try track since it's something I really enjoy doing. Yeah, how are you enjoying the collegiate track world so far? You already had an indoor season and now heading into outdoors. So far, so good. I think the group of guys, you know, really interesting group of guys, very friendly. And I think it's the connections that we have with the guys that makes us who we are. And I'm really glad I have the soccer side and the track background, which really goes a long way. You know, in terms of, you know, your goals this year, what are some things you really want to achieve by the end of outdoor season, you think? Um, By the end of outdoor season, I think just give it my all. Um, We'll see where we go from here, hopefully. I'm hoping to make it a national as my first year, but um, it it all gonna takes hard work and the commitment and you know it's a huge time commitment first of all. And then the finals coming up, you know, it's gonna be a little hard, but we will see where we go from here. Had you ever been to Maine before you came to Bates? I've never been to Maine before. So the first time I came to Maine was actually on uh, Admitted Students Day. Just and you know it's a huge transaction from New York, Connecticut to Maine. Yeah, and I bet going from even going from the Bronx to Connecticut was right. also a transition also. That was also a big transition. I had to go away from home for the first time. And I thought I was going to feel homesick, but I didn't, which is good. And I'm carrying the same stuff here to men. So were you born and raised in the Bronx? or No, I'm born and raised in the Congo. Moved to the Bronx about six, six years ago. Okay, and so going from the Congo to the Bronx, that's got to be it. Yep. What was that like? So it's pretty much all my life I've been moving from places to places. <laughs> um, from Congo to the Bronx, huge jump. You know, I went from this small city to a bigger city. And then not speaking English, you know, a f native French speaker. Mm. Transaction was really, really good. Uh, I found myself lots of times. Couldn't understand my classes, what was going on. So I had to stay in school for extra hours, you know, go to summer school just to kind of catch up on what was going on and, you know, just stuff like that. So you were speaking French when you first came over here. And then how long did it take you to uh, capture the, the English language? It took me about six months mm -hmm. to, like, fully understand English, which I think is very impressive. Well, I think it is. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And now it's, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, just any other thoughts on how your first year's been going at Bates and what you enjoy, maybe enjoy the most about it so far? I'd say so far so good. Um, I've had a chance to be a three varsity sport athlete, uh, meet incredible people, nice professors, you know, nice faculty members. Just think one thing that I actually like about Bates is the sense of community. It's everyone helping each other, you know, 
which I think is really valuable. All right, Bofis, congrats again on your great meet there up in Orono, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. The number 40 nationally ranked Bates men's tennis team defeated number 32 Brandeis 7-2 on Saturday in Merrill Gymnasium, picking up their first win over a nationally ranked opponent this season. Junior Ben Rosen teamed with senior Chris Ellis to win 8-3 at number one doubles, and Rosen followed that up with a 6-love, six 6-3 six win at number one singles. He joined the Bobcast to update us on the team and his progress this year in doubles and singles. Uh, I think Chris and I work well together, and we just picked off. We picked up where we left off last year because we played well last year together. Um, and we started great this year. We got a couple wins in California. And, yeah, like you said, we just we played well against Brandeis this past weekend against a good team. And then you, for a number one singles, got a victory. Obviously, you've been challenged facing a lot of tough opponents this year, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> tough. How has that helped you develop? Oh, it's pushed me every time. I mean, if I, I have to go into practice now every time just with the right mentality because I know regardless of what school I play, I'm always going to play, you know, their best player at the top spot, and I have to be ready to go every time for my team. I mean, I know before the Brandeis match, you guys had a match at Georgetown, a Division One school. What was that experience like? That was that was a lot of fun. I mean, that was the first time Bates in my career has ever played a D1 team. Um, I played them at a high school, so kind of a weird, <laughs> weird situation, and it was cold out, but... And, I mean, we brought it. We played really well. Um, Chris and I played ball in doubles, and uh, I thought we were going to take uh, the doubles point or one of the other uh, doubles matches. And we had tough, t tough singles matches. I was lucky, and I, I played well, and I beat the kid, but tough match, and they're a good team. Absolutely. So you were playing that one outdoors then, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> very tough conditions. It was like 45 degrees, really windy. It was tough, but we love it. Absolutely. How do you guys determine whether or not you're going to be playing outdoors or indoors? It's tough. I mean, it's tough because I think everyone on the team has different preferences for their ideal conditions. You know, some people, you know, the big servers, the big hitters like indoor conditions, and you know, maybe the smaller kids, the California kids, like the outdoor conditions. But I think overall, um, if it's over 50 degrees, we play outside. If it's under, then we play inside. Who are maybe some of the young guys on the team that we should know about who are coming up that you've noticed stick out this year? We have some big up-and-comers. you got to keep your eye out for... Jacob Capulia, he's he's dominating. He's he's crushing things at mainly the four through six position singles. Vid, who's another good freshman who's making moves, he's playing well. He, he has one or two wins this, so far this season. Um, Nick Glover, who's doing well, he he's a force and he's he's always getting thrown in at doubles and singles. He's very good. And Jacob Eisenberg, who's coming over an injury, is also a really good freshman and he's he's ready to go. Excellent. So we'll keep an eye on them and then going forward. Now, for you personally, if I'm not mistaken, you studied abroad this fall, right? So how did that experience go? And did you, did you have any time to do any training? Yes, of <laughs> course. That's a great question. Um, and my coach will be happy that I did do a lot of training. I think I did, I did more than the average study abroad person. Um, but it definitely was a transition. I played, I played more than enough when I was abroad, but still coming back getting used to the competitive environment of just being on a team, and I really missed it. I think that's the one thing that to say about going off campus. I really miss being with the team because I'm so, so close to the guys. I'm a competitive guy. I just missed just pushing each other through practice every day. But I was, I was ready to go for the season. I'm so happy it's here. And where did you study abroad? Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Okay, what was the experience like overall? I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> um, I'd say uh, by like three-fourths of the way into it, I was ready to come back. But, of course, I loved studying at a different university, and I met a lot of cool people. Great. Now we're heading into the heart of NESCAC play. You've got a couple of NESCAC matches, but now it, it really gets going. I know the team, uh, uh, obviously the goal is probably you know, get into that NESCAC tournament, right, some way, somehow? Absolutely. Um, we have pretty much all our NESCAC matches coming up. Yeah. I haven't made it. Um, in my Bates career yet, but we're hungry. We've, we've been close the past couple of years. No doubt in my mind that we could do it this year. And in terms of uh, the NESCAC matches, I mean, probably pretty familiar with a lot of these opponents, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, if they're not from, you know, my section from high school, you know, I, I've played them, you know, in previous years. So I know the level that's coming up. I know it's really tough, and uh, I'm just pumped for it. I'm pumped to get some, get some uh, competition going with the team. Rivalry match right away, right? Wednesday against Colby? That... Wednesday against Colby, that's, yeah. that's the main rivalry, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think they graduated many starters, so we know what's coming. I know who I'm playing, so do a lot of the people, and we're just going to bring it. What do you tell some of the younger guys about NESCAC playing? What's it like, or, or you just let them go for it? 
<laughs> Not much you can say. I, we let them go for it. Um, I mean, they, they just it's just a different environment. Um, and a lot of times when you play indoors, like in Merrill, just a loud environment. People are yelling. It's really intense. Um, just stay calm, and we just stick with what we know and just competing and trusting ourselves. The men's and women's rowing teams raced on the Charles River this weekend against the Harvard Lightweights as well as Simmons for the women and Boston College for the men. All three women's crews finished ahead of Simmons, but the third varsity eight made headlines by winning their race. The victory shows off the Bobcats' remarkable depth, and we caught up with junior third varsity eight Cox and Hannah DeBruin to talk all things rowing. It was really nice to be on the water after being indoors for the, all the winter, so I feel like everyone was just so excited to be on the water. And we really just followed the race plan and took it home. And as the coxswain for the third varsity eight, you're working with maybe some, some younger athletes. And so what's that like? Mm -hmm. Well, we only have really one freshman in our boat. So it, it's really we have a crowd who has really been experienced and stuff. So it's really nice to get in the boat and work together. And then what have you learned throughout your career from uh, you know Abby and, and Catherine, who have been you know coxswains for the second and first varsity eight, respectively? Just seeing how they deal with different, different situations on and off the water is inspiring. And just seeing taking advice from them and saying how to go about things race plan wise and off the off the race course just really helps me improve as a person. Were you a coxswain in high school or when did you start doing it? Yeah I started coxing freshman year of high school when I wanted to row but it was way too small. <laughs> so. And so when you initially started what do you think you, you have most improved on since then? Coxing is just such a unique yeah. place in the boat that people think all we do is say row and just not really <laughs> work but it's really my mind game because you have to figure out when to say stuff in which tone and how to say it so I feel like the hardest thing is putting all the pieces together so like I might know something I want to say but then to actually say it in a way that's meaningful at the correct time is really hard to understand so like seeing how beermen and track like lead races and seeing like where they make their moves is really like, important and stuff to see and like just talking to other cocks and seeing how they cox. The team as a whole how do you think it's going so far obviously it's been been tough to train because we did a story last year about the early spring not so much this year. Yeah I think training inside can be kind of boring but we mix it up with like rowing on the ice rink which is fun and yeah with all us rowing as a team but I feel like everyone's just so motivated to row well that we're not letting the winter like bog us down and we're just, like, so excited when we actually do get the chance to go on the water and race. Well and the rowers are on the erg machines and whatnot but what are you doing as a coxswain? Are you just like yelling at them? The um, so as a coxswain we have actually um we leave them through the workouts on the ergs and through core. So when we're doing core, all us, the coxswains participate. And actually, we've all started lifting a lot this year. But it's been good to really start to like work out a little more with the team. Going forward, what do you think some of the main emphasis is going to be for the team, maybe for your boat in particular? I feel like we're we're going to be focusing more on getting like the catch timing and sending together. But I really think we're seeing more water time to really get that rhythm down and move together because that was our first time in that lineup and I think the same for the 1B and the 2B. So it's getting that time to practice, getting the ratings higher and just moving. Last two years you've been the alternate coxswain at the NCAA Championships. Uh, Abby and, and Track are both seniors now. You're a junior. So uh, do you catch yourself sometimes thinking about what might, next year might be like? Sometimes I do catch myself, but it's very important to stay in the moment and realize that like this is this year. We have to do our best this year to help the team as a whole. All right, great. Well, Hannah DeBruin, congrats again on winning the third varsity eight race down there against Harvard and Simmons. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next time on the Bates Bobcast, we'll recap perhaps the biggest week of the regular season for the men's lacrosse team. They visit number 16 nationally ranked Bowdoin on Wednesday, and they host 2016 NASCAC finalists and NCAA tournament team Middlebury Saturday at 1 o'clock. The baseball team is in action against Bowdoin. All three games will be played in Waterville. Meanwhile, the softball team visits Trinity, but will be the home team for all three games. The track and field teams host MIT, Tufts, and RPI this Saturday, and women's lacrosse, tennis, and rowing continue their seasons as well. That's next time on the Bates Bobcast. <laughs>